It is a generally accepted rule of the world that every person has something that they are talented in, something that they just naturally have an affinity for. For some, it could be something relating to sports or natural athleticism. For others, it could be artistic. For another group, it could be a natural aptitude for academics. So that begs the question, what do others see you as talented at? But more importantly, what do you see yourself as talented in? I've always been in a bit of a weird spot when it comes to this question. I would consider myself fairly intelligent, but I'm no genius. I would consider myself somewhat athletic, but I'm no specimen. As the youngest of three, I often fell into a very odd category. My oldest brother had a natural talent when it came to music. My middle brother was blessed with innate athleticism, having played high school basketball and excelled at it. As for me, I inherited some of my oldest brother's musical talent, but I never reached the heights he did. I have some of my middle brother's athleticism, but I was never more physically impressive than he was. In fact, a painful reality of human existence is that no matter how hard we work at something, we can often never reach the peak of those whom we envy. And so we fall into a rut, thinking ourselves as inferior, and fully believing it. I don't think there's a better example than the antagonist of seasons 1 and 2, the great king himself, Oikawa Toru. Oikawa is presented at first as someone for Kageyama and Hinata to overcome. He seems shallow and functional, but not nuanced. But as the layers are peeled back, as the series progressed, I realize that the most depressing part of him for me is that I often see myself in him. Not that that's unique to only Haikyuu as a show or a story. As noted in various other videos, many different concepts and characters from a variety of mediums connect with me on an emotional and personal level. But Oikawa reminds me of something that I really hate about myself. That no matter how hard I try at X thing, that no matter the heights I seem to reach, that no matter the talents I possess and the work I put in, there will always be someone better than me. And the lie that gets planted that maybe, just maybe, I have no talent at all. I know that's an unhealthy mindset, but these thoughts were all I could think about when I saw Oikawa in the latter half of Season 1. In previous videos, I've mentioned that the names and kanji of Haikyuu's cast of well-written characters were intentionally chosen by Furudate, and Oikawa's name is no different. His first name, Toru, means to go through, while his last name, Oikawa, roughly translates to reaching the river. The impression he gives off when he first appears is exactly the type of person that I would struggle to get along with. He is smug, arrogant, petty, spiteful, and childish. In Season 1 and Season 2, Oikawa and Alba Josai are presented as the major obstacle that Karasuno must defeat if they have any hope of reaching the national stage. And yet, despite this terrible first impression, there is one attribute that sticks out above everything else and that is his passion for the sport of volleyball, and how it makes him feel inferior despite his abundant talents. As the persona we are initially shown fades, we see a young man who is psychologically tortured by the prospect that he is nothing more than ordinary. And while this is obviously not true in the eyes of his opponents and teammates alike, their opinions don't matter because he himself believes it. The show makes it apparent that he is not a genius either, he is not a transcendent talent in comparison to his rivals in Kageyama and Ushijima, and there is nothing that he wants more. And so, Oikawa trains to become the ideal setter, fitting seamlessly in any team as he utilizes his incredibly high volleyball IQ that enables him to complement and enhance the performance of any team he is on. And despite this, despite all of his successes of being named the best setter, of being one of the most highly skilled players in the prefecture, of being the captain of the powerhouse school Alba Josai. He may be able to reach the river, but he can never cross over it. He never reaches the national stage that he so longs for. He can never defeat Ushijima and Shiratorizawa. He goes much of his middle school and high school career feeling inferior and resentful, even if others see him as talented and skilled. Even when Alba Josai defeats Karasuno in Season 1, the look on his face is not one of joy, but measured relief. 
measured relief that he seems to have kept the inevitability of defeat at bay. Oikawa doesn't feel joy at these victories, because he knows that he will eventually be surpassed by Kageyama. Which proves prophetic when he and Karasuno do in their rematch at the end of Season 2. And yet, he still gives it his all regardless. There is no moment in the show that is quite as inspirational for me as the three quotes related to Oikawa at the end of Season 2. Underneath his smug demeanor, he's deeply insecure about himself, the talents he possesses, and the aspirations that he cannot seemingly reach. That is, of course, until he finally understands what an old mentor once told him. And from that moment on, Oikawa lets go of all of his insecurities of not being a genius, of not being good enough, finally being able to stand up to the challenge in front of him, playing to the highest level possible in what proves to be the final moments of his high school career. I'm not sure if this was an intentional decision by Furudate and the animation team, but whether reading the manga or watching the anime, Oikawa's sets are never given the same breathtaking kinetic or visual movement as Kageyama's sets. And granted, I think part of this is because Kageyama is one of the series' main protagonists, but Oikawa's final set is easily one of the most memorable in the whole series. It's like, when he finally broke the chains of insecurity and doubt, he reached a new level finally able to wholeheartedly believe in himself and allowing his talent to take bloom. I've thought a lot about the three quotes he gives at the end of Season 2, and every one of them hits on a core insecurity of mine that I've struggled with my whole life. I have always struggled with self-esteem, envy, comparison, and confidence. I'm not sure when I started struggling with it, probably once I hit middle school, which is always a trying time, no matter who you are. Others would see me as having talent in certain areas, but in the end, their praise and compliments meant nothing, because I didn't believe in myself. Throughout much of high school, I would lament the fact that I wasn't popular, that I wasn't particularly attractive, that I wasn't a high school athlete, that I wasn't the smartest student. The list goes on and on. Even when I hit college, I would still occasionally feel bouts of envy, inferiority, insecurity, and comparison as I navigated an entirely new social environment, that no matter how well I did at something, or how impressive I seemed to be to others for one moment, I would never reach the talents of someone with natural affinity. So when Oikawa thinks back to his past, he remembers the words of his previous coach, that those who are naturally more gifted than him have been different since day one, and that complaining about that fact is foolish. Once he's done everything he possibly can to improve, then he has the freedom to complain. Even though Oikawa seems to be encouraging his teammates when he talks about the belief in one's own talent, I believe it is that moment that he truly learned the meaning of those words. And nothing in the series so far has affected me as much as the line where Oikawa tells his teammates and himself that if you yourself think that you don't have talent, then you'll probably never have it. And I think that's why Oikawa is able to stand in front of Kageyama at the end of their final match with the net in between them, having faced the challenge in front of him head on, and being at peace with the end result. Oikawa may not be the main protagonist of Haikyuu, but his tale is a gripping one because I think it perfectly displays the feeling that everyone has at some point. The feeling of fighting against the inevitability of what it means to be human. Oikawa was finally able to believe in himself and his talent. That yes, today might be the day to grasp the chance to let your talent bloom. I pray that someday, you and I can say the same as well. Thank you for watching my video on Oikawa. I've wanted to do a video on him for a long time, but I've unfortunately been rather busy this month. I also wanted to once again express how grateful I am for all of the views, likes, dislikes, comments, and subscriptions. I honestly never thought that I would reach view numbers in the thousands, at least not for a few years, so I've been blown away by the response. Have a great week, and I hope to see you all again soon.